Hey everybody, it is Wednesday at 11, um, 11.06 actually, uh, running just a teeny bit late. This is my new time for my craft demos on, um, on Wednesdays so that I can open at 12 and not be um, doing this while people come in. So um, I today I wanted to highlight something that I think I've kind of overlooked uh, sharing recently, and that is my Julie Nutting um, doll uh, doll stamps and things like that. I do have um, some still in stock. She has discontinued a few of them, but um, I thought today I would play around and show you some of the techniques I have for making my dolls um, look expressive. I can't find my doll samples for some reason, but I'll just go ahead and start and you can see what I do. Slightly different setup than usual today. I'm hoping that it's not too bad. We'll see. We will see. Okay. All right, so Julie Nutting. She has these amazing dolls, um, uh, stamps, and many of them had dies that went with them. And I have, uh, you know, a variety of them because of course I, I love them and I collect the things that I love. So um, some of these are now discontinued. Um, they're named, I think this is the Rita doll. Ooh, it's been a while since I've had these out, so I'm not sure exactly what their names are. For sure, this is the Rita doll, and here's her um, cutout, and then here's her dress. So this came with a full set of dies. Uh, I also have, um, I want to see this one's name is Daphine, and um, she came with a set of dies that you could use to cut her outfit and her. I don't know where the die to cut her out is. Oh, there it is. Um... So, whoops, so there's the die for her. And then she actually came with outfits. The, the, there weren't dies with the outfits, but you could cut, um, create and fussy cut um, outfits with these uh, stamps. Um, and then there's just a, a collection of things like the, well, that's for her again, um, the stamps to make her little footwear. And then there's just the standalone stamps that you can um, you know, cut out and fussy cut some of them. Actually, oh, this one has a die too. It's kind of a shame that she stopped doing this with the dies and the dolls because it was a great setup. Um, and then there's this one. I've used this one a lot. She doesn't have a die, and so what I would do with her is fussy cut and then cut her outfits out and stuff like that. So today, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my favorites. And um, so today, I think I'm just gonna use this one. Yeah. Oh, so there is a little, um, here's a die to cut the dress that goes, I believe, on her. Let's see. I think, I'm not sure. And the top. So, yeah, those are fun. But I think that I'm just going to focus on this little lady today. And um, I wanted to show you how I create dolls with um, dimension. And it does mean using my dies. And um, my favorite thing to do is to um, cut them out and then layer them with vintage paper. You know, I realized I didn't have my stamp pad. So let me go get my stamp pad. But um, in terms of color, this uh, this actually is a very similar color um, tone or tone to my my personal skin color. So we often underestimate how dark our skin is. All right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start by stamping. And I'm gonna stamp her on the skin tone, because that's what I wanna use. I'm not so worried that I didn't get every detail, because a lot of this is gonna be layered up with the um, dye. So that's not that doesn't bother me. I'm gonna get my dye machine here. This is my platinum machine. If you know me at all, you know that this is my favorite machine of all the dyes machines. It's a workhorse. I 
have yet to break one. I've broken a die, but never broken the machine. Um, and then I've got a little piece of tape that's just always sitting there. I'm gonna line it up as best I can. Tape it on and roll it through. So this is the start. Oh, I'm sorry, I realized you didn't see any of that. <laughs> I don't have quite as much perspective. So there it is. So there's the doll to start with. And then what I'm gonna do is just cut multiple layers of old book page. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what, maybe this isn't the best book. We'll just. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna run this through the machine several times to get uh, and I don't care about the feet or anything like that. I really am just trying to get um, the words. And in fact, what I might do if I want to get more than one die cut out of the page, then I'm going to pull that off. I don't have to tape it this time because it uh, it doesn't matter exactly where it is. Whereas when I do the stamping, I really want to get the impression the way I want it. There's one. I'm going to cut multiples today. Oop. A little static cling issue going on here. Ooh, I'm hoping this is working. Let's do it the right way around though so that all the words are the right direction. Now, um, it's worth noting, I don't think I'm gonna be bringing Julie Nutting into this store for a while. Uh, I still have inventory left over from the last few years and um, there hasn't been a lot of uh, demand. So I will not be reordering from her for a little bit. And so unless, um, unless I hear otherwise or unless I sell out, the actual bodies out of uh, book text before because that's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, so at this point I have three layers. Let me see. All right. Okay. I'm going to cut a couple more just to have backup so I have lots to choose from. several of you in my classes so this should be familiar so it's been it's been over a year since I've done a Julie Nutting doll come on there we go all right so after this I think I'll have enough layers it at that. Pull that off and then we'll just push this aside for the moment. I might cut some more later, but we'll see. Okay. You know what? I told myself to grab scissors and I didn't. Just let me do that. Go.
So the idea is that, you know, I'm trying to match this here. And then um, I could also, I mean, I could just actually put this down as a, now if I had wanted to fussy cut this a little bit, I could have stamped it and then um, cut around it. So like I didn't get that arm there. So we'll leave that off because actually what I'll do probably is stamp it and, and cut a body, a bodice. Um, okay, so I just wanted to show you uh, how to create a three-dimensional skirt because that is what's a lot of fun about these dolls is being able to do stuff like that. Um, I'm going to uh, start with a, one of the pieces and um, I'm just going to go ahead and add in a little just dimension on its own. Oh no, oh no, my video is paused on my end. I'm hoping that doesn't mean I've lost you on your end. So that's what I start with. I just start by, you can also use um, the sort of ribbon method if you're more comfortable to create a curl. You just, what you're doing is um, breaking the fibers when you do this. And so it creates a little curl. Kind of the same thing you do when you get a perm, if you're old enough to remember what a perm is. <laughs> I cannot tell if my video is working or not. Maybe. Okay. So, you know, you want to start with, basically, you know, we're just trying to build in dimension. And um, depending on how froofy we want the skirt, I might just start by putting in some curls and uh, and then putting the skirt in place and having it overlap a little bit. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start by doing that. Actually, maybe I'll do it from this side. I'm just gonna, yeah. I'm just gonna glue this little edge down. So this is me building this skirt structure. I'm gonna leave my glue on its side because it's not one of the ones that gets, um, that sits on its top. And I am using Eileen's tacky glue because it dries quickly and it's gonna really hold the pieces in place because that's really what I want. Okay, thanks Lois. Mine froze for a little bit. I had to navigate away and come back to it, but as long as you can still hear and see me. Of course, I have to be talking for you to hear me, so I'll try to remember to do that. So I'm just doing um, some, I'm finding that this is working a little better for me. I'm getting a nice curl doing it this way. So I'm now gonna add this to the other side. And I am lining the skirt up the way it's cut. So, you know, even though I'm not placing it exactly where it um, goes on the doll, I am doing it the same direction that I cut it. That, you know, like if you were to lay this out, it'll match the skirt. Do. And this is, it does get fussy. So like, I'm gonna, you could also use double-sided tape if you were um, impatient. I find that for me, I might end up uh, tearing it by pulling it up. So at this point, I'm just gonna stick with the glue. Now eventually I'm gonna want it to be tight at, this, at the waist. So I'm, I mean, I'm thinking about that. So, I'm trying not to get pleats, but you know what I might do? 
can't remember what direction this went. <laughs> this is the artist at work, as it were. Truly just playing and trying to get something that looks good to me. At this point, I'm going to start gluing the waist down so that I have some context there. I'm not worried about it poking out because what I'm going to do is cut something else that comes around, maybe covers that. But if I were, I could just pinch it in. What I want is that bubble there. All right, so rather than watch paint dry today, we're going to watch glue dry under my fingers. Fortunately, the tacky glue dries pretty quickly, especially when I'm working with a super thin paper like this. Okay. I'm gonna add a little more curl to this, see if I can't get, remember I'm partly using the warmth of my hands to um, iron it in too, so I'm gonna rub it with my fingers and try to get that really established. Oh yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna say it, cause I always do. Uh, it's the same as anything that I um, you know, promote in the store. If you don't like it, you're not finished. So keep going. Oh, you know what, I bet you guys can hear that. There we go, there, that's better. Um, so yeah, you're just, if you know, like I'm not so happy with this, so I'm gonna throw in another layer. Uh, if I don't like how the edges are gonna come out, I'm gonna maybe, modify them with some liquid pearls or add a little bit of ribbon. Um, the nice thing about the dolls is you can really layer up on these really easily. So see, I'm just gonna go ahead and glue that in on this side. Add some glue here, pinch that together. Again, practice a little patience. <laughs> Hi, Ingrid. Thanks for joining us. If you're in Northridge, you should come by the shop. I'm just down the street which I know because I live in Northridge myself. So anyway, not finished. I could also, I got a little glue on that one. Um, maybe what I'll do here, I'll cut another piece. So this is why you want multiple pieces around. Um, I'm thinking though that I might just cut that down a little bit and see what happens if I create a little curl. Whoop, sorry. My setup's a little different today. It's actually in my way. Okay, so I'm using a combination of the twisting it around something and the ribbon curl. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick this down here and just fill that space with this. Give it a little dimension. Trim it a little bit, I think. So there, the beginnings of a three-dimensional skirt. The beginnings, a three-dimensional skirt <laughs> is probably a better way to say it. A little gluey right now, but that's that's how I do it. 
I start with it like that. Um, I could also, if I really wanted to, come in and add a layer over the top and make this an underskirt. I'm not going to, but that is one option. I mean, I could just also, uh, I had to pause for a second and think about how I would do this. Make it a skirt like that. So this is one way, and this is, you know, what's fun about the dolls is just play, play, play until you find something you like. I'll give her a little pleat over the top. You can do the same thing. Hey, Kendall, thanks. I don't think we've done dolls together yet, so. Um, one of my favorite dolls is one that's been discontinued for a while now, which is such a bummer because it's beautiful, but let me show you. Um, that's this mermaid, and I've made her a bunch of different ways. And uh, I so, so, oh, look, I just found the dye for the dress. There you go. Um, so bummed when she discontinued the mermaid because she was very popular and she's just a great doll. She's a doll of a gal. Now I'm not gluing this down yet because I am not convinced that this is what I'm gonna do, but if I did, fussy, fussy, fussy. one of the reasons why it's sometimes good to start by gluing it down. You know what? I'm skipping it. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to leave this as it is for the moment. I might glue that curl together, but that's, that's what I'm going to do for the moment. And then let's see. One thing that's fun to use is, um, you know, scrapbook paper, which of course I did not grab any. I just grabbed these colorful pieces. You know what, I'm sorry, I just realized. All I really want for this is the um, torso. Make sure you cut the right piece out. There we go. I hear its brain is working this morning. Excuse my reach while I crank this out. Urgh. One day, one day I will have the full professional setup with multi-cameras and lots of places to put things that are still on camera. Okay, so I cut this intentionally with a little bit of a lip here so I can play around with cutting some stuff like this. So you can see how I can come along maybe and add I'm just gonna do it just because I don't want this to be hours long. Um, I've seen, if you are really into this, there are some amazing forums on Facebook where people take this doll, or these dolls, and really make them look human. Um, and they add, you know, they, she's got, they've got this awesome little shrug and things like that. And they really add details that make the, the dolls come alive. Uh, I'm going to have to get some ribbon and cover that up because I got it mucky. So super simple to add details, especially if you ever have, um, if you have any of Julie Nutting dolls, um, her, uh, her book, she shows you how to add features and stuff in a way that's really, uh-oh, there we go. That's why I was having issues. It doesn't take much to add an expression. That makes her look kind of mad, huh? So we'll just add a little, there we go. There we go. So I can keep going. Um, I would probably add hair. I will probably add hair. So if I were to do hair, ooh, look, I have a piece of gold in there. That might be kind of fun to do something gold. Um, 
What I would do, I, well, I'll show you. I'll, I'll stick around for a little more. Let's see, let's, do we wanna make her, what, super blonde? No. Nope, that was wrong. We could make her a super dark haired. That would be kind of interesting. So what you want to do in order to get the hair is you might, and I usually change, change the hair, I'll be honest. <laughs> I often go in and do something else. Now it's going to be hard to see on the black, so I'm really just going to be looking for the, um, I don't know if you can see the ink mark there. Ooh, that's tough. But it's there. It's got to hold it up to the light in a way that I can see it. <laughs> Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this super easier on me. I'm not going to do it that way. Well, I am going to do it that way. So I'm going to actually cut out the dye just for the head out of the hair color. And then I'm going to do a little sneaky thing that you can do to make it easy to put the hair on without having to fussy cut all the way around the oval of the face. Okay, so there's the dye that I just cut. And I'm going to cut the arms off. And I'm actually going to cut her head off. But then what I'm going to do... Again, one of these days I'll be the kind of person that thinks ahead enough to have everything ready to go. But what I'm going to do is cut along the hairline. This is kind of thick paper, so it looks like I need to do it more than once. Oof. And then I'm going to cut the face out of my doll. Good morning. That's my daughter Courtney in the background. She's here to help me with my stuff. All right, so normally, maybe we should have started with this, but we're gonna start with it this way. The idea behind the hole that I've, or the, the slot that I've cut is that you can then slowly work it so that you can put this on like a wig. Honestly, like an actual wig. This is not the best blade for this. Um, exacto knife. There you go. That gives you the idea of it. I'm just going to cut this other hair away. And then actually that means what you can do when you do it that way is you can make the hair longer, shorter, as long as you get that profile piece to put, the, um, to slide the head through, then you really can just switch the hair out like a wig. Anyway, I hope that was um, useful. I, I didn't do the greatest job. I'll be honest, I don't have my glasses on, <laughs> so I wasn't able to see the lines very well. Um, again, preparation, but that is just your basic tutorial on how to put together a little um, three-dimensional doll using the Julie Nutting doll, um, uh, doll stamps. I am um, planning to put a meetup. I'm going back to my meetups, which are basically make and takes. And um, this one will be a meetup uh, that will be free um, if you buy a 
doll stamp. So the doll stamps range from, I think, six bucks for the smaller ones to the more elaborate versions. Um, so buy a doll and, um, and then join the meetup. And we will talk, uh, that'll be on the schedule this afternoon when I send out the newsletter, if you're interested in that. There's a lot more that I would do to this doll. I would um, add shoes, I would add maybe a little color to the cheeks. I might come in and add details to the skirt. So the more you add, of course, the more co cohesive the whole thing will look, just like, uh, just like with collage and mixed media, anything, um, you know, like if it feels unfinished, is probably missing something that uh, would be easy to add in. Um, you can see that her hair is like, all right, this pen is dry. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget I have these in stock if you want them. Uh, you can come by and take a look. And um, let's see, let's do this. I'm gonna get a spot in my studio today. So let's see if this will hold. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, the store is open 12 to five and I am um, planning on building in more hours starting soon, hopefully, probably Thursdays will be a late day. And uh, yeah, I hope that works for you guys and I hope to see you at the store soon. All right, bye everyone.